Yeah, so I still don't know how long this thing has been sitting. Need to talk to the owner later, but the insurance cert that's on the windscreen is from 2012. Um, the overgrowth and just the general condition would say that it's probably been there since then, but I'll be able to confirm with him later. And we're here. Right, let's get out and take a look at this thing. So, here it is. It's, um, oh, what is this thing? It's a David Brown 996. Um, I'm not completely unfamiliar with David Brown's. Um, but, uh, yeah, hopefully I'll know enough to get this thing working anyway. But as you can see, it's pretty overgrown. It's a um, four-cylinder engine. Not sure what kind of transmissions in these. Uh, just trying to take a look around the other side, see if I can get you a better shot of it. So, it all seems to be there, don't we? Everything it looks to be present and correct. Drive belt looks a bit rough and things, but we'll um, work our way through it slowly and just make sure that the engine is free and things before we try cranking it. String that right around the back. Yeah, so obviously it hasn't moved in some time. All right, I think it's time to get the uh, brush cutter out and we'll get to work on it. All right, first job, I'm gonna fire up the brush cutter and uh, try and clear some of that higher stuff out of the way so I can put the camera in there and let you get a better view of what's going on. All right, I'm gonna get the hedge cutter on train cut in a bit closer and so you can be dragged the stuff off the engine and things then. Yeah, so I came very well prepared. Um, never filled the stuff with gas before I left. I'm just gonna grab a uh, fork and see, can I just drag some of this stuff out of here and I'll make the long trip home and get some gas in a second. Funny, uh, I've seen some Willow Star videos for there's something buried in the undergrowth, and people always say, Yeah, that was staged. <laughs> this definitely ain't staged. <laughs> look at that. Uh, now I have you a bit more look, pull it from the rear and from the sides. Yeah, I got a long way to go before I can get into that cab. Okay, better get back to it. Okay, so it's looking a bit more like a tractor now. Got most of the stuff out of here except the bits that are on top of the engine. And it looks like the Ness 
a lot of other crap up in there so I'm trying to get that out now it's a side of nesting season on so this nest should be empty and it is so let's clear on that craft room Got the exhaust manifold and just get out the last of these brayers some in here. I think that should be fairly good. I don't know how this um, bonnet is attached, but I doubt it'll get it off. So, uh, just show you inside the cab. Got that clear, I just need to clear off the seat. So, mind that little guy as well. Oh, no. <clears throat> I have to find something to sit on. Um, I've already been playing around with gear levers. This one's neutral. This one. Oh yeah, this one's moving now. So. I would say that's probably a neutral position on that one. This one's neutral. See if the clutch works. Yeah, I think that'll move. I just need to get uh, something to sit on and I'll take you in here. Okay, so I'm in the cab. Uh, this thing is showing 8,600 hours. It's uh, remarkably complete. Let's try. Oh, that clutch is stiff. I think there might be actually stuff still growing down there. It's blocky, it, but I would think. Oh, yeah, that's what I think. Well, it's probably neutral, and this one is definitely a neutral. And there is a key with it. Obviously, nothing's going to happen. And that one, these will start people that thinks they're going to sit into something that's been parked 10 years and that's a crank. But at least I know the key will turn. Uh, other than that, don't think there's much to show you in here. This is something actually, if you're unfamiliar with um, David Brown's, the fuel shutoff works in reverse to most tractors. So when it's pushed in, it's off, and you pull it out and lock it down there to start it. So I just need to make sure that's connected at the engine side. Uh, have a quick look over the electrics. I think it should be safe enough to fit a battery, but we'll. Stick a nice letter switch on it anyway for safety. Uh, right, let's go and have a look at the outside. Alright, so injection pump, fuel filters, diesel tank lives back up there. <clears throat> Gonna have to create some crud out of that fan, let it rotate freely. This is where the battery lives. So looks like been quite a bit of oil leaking down top of it. So I'd imagine that's probably from this um, oil bath air filter, which is actually corroded out as well. So we'll um, take a look at that. We don't want to ingest any rust or anything into this engine when we got to start it. So we might just disconnect that or replace it with some other kind of filter for the startup. Um, as I said, I have a nice letter switch, so I'll put it in there just safer uh, when we go to start this thing. Start the motor, could probably do a little bit of a clean up, might clean up these connections. I uh, wonder if this is the original wiring loom, look at that, it's got a protective covering on it, all the way through, it's quite neat. I would imagine that is original. So um, we've got our fuel filter here, that's, or sorry, that's the lift pump, there's this little sediment ball on top of it. And then it pumps over to the filters on the other side, so I might just open that up and see what the diesel in that is like before we try and start it. You see here there was a... I'm going to have to take that out to stop it hitting the alternator. I like this modification, that's the bottom bracket, but it looks a bit holding the alternator. But, um, yeah, the belt is kind of crusty, but it'll do for our start up. So, yeah, 
seems to be all complete at least, but I think we'll um, get a spanner on that crank pulley, rotate it by hand first, and we will check the fuel system and better check what this thing is like for oil as well. So, oh yeah, it's another thing I've just noticed there, our connection. We assume that should be onto that starter motor, so kind of begs the question, does the starter motor actually work? So we need to connect that on there. Okay. We need to make sure that none of this wording is energized. Ooh, wasp. Yeah, he's woken up at the wrong time. So, have a look at the coolant situation. Dry. So I'll have to add something to that. Thought I saw, oh yeah, there's a drain there, but I doubt it works. So we'll just add some um, coolant to that. I'll have to have a look and see what kind of condition the hoses are in. Okay, bring you up to speed of and kind of have you look around this thing now with a few minutes. Um, the Stop is broken, right? So that is when it's in the forward position, it is off on off, right? So it's gonna give that it's great. WD 40 D is, I would imagine, is the throttle, and that is the jam solid. So I just gotta give all the joints in that little spray, and loosen it off. to work on that to get it free but uh yeah we get there just give it a good soaking in wd-40 for the moment and if it comes to it i can um just disconnect it at the pump i must get the foot throttle on the other side travel is there so that's a fairly complex setup I'll work that free we'll let the WD-40 work we'll go back to the workshop and get some tools um, let's spray that bolt there so we can get that I would imagine if it's probably working without it it shouldn't need that strut but um, if it comes to it, we can bolt it on there. Uh, the electrical connections ooh. might be best just to give them a bit of a clean up. Let's give them a small shot of WD so we can open them. And petrol terminals, I'd say, should be fairly free because they're covered in crud. And uh, the oil battery or filter, we're going to have to have a look at. Let's raise the hose clamp on it so I can disconnect the pipe. But the big mystery here at the moment is... Oh, oh yeah, I'm going to show you something else before I go any further. I'd seen this sitting, I was wondering was it part of the fuel system. It's not, it's actually unscrewed from there, so I'd imagine once it's part, the that plug was fully taken out to drain the cooling system so the block didn't crack. Um, I've been able to open the oil filler. Quite a bit of work. Uh, looks good. No sign of head gasket or anything. And the big mystery is where is the bloody dipstick in this thing? No, I think it's this because there is a tube down inside the hole that goes into the sump from here. But no matter what I do, I've tried turning it, I've tried pulling on it. I don't want to force it and break it because it's plastic. But um, it does not want to seem to come out. So I just. Uh, Give that a random sock EWD as well. Uh, it seems to work for other YouTubers, or they just blast everything with WD and turn the key. So um, we'll have to work on that. That's a strange setup there. 
wonder about that pipe. There it's far. Oh, actually, that's a water drain. That's nice. So if water gets down into the exhaust, it drains off down there. But luckily, yeah, that exhaust is well covered and that is sea solid. So there's probably no water down there. If you give that a shot, WD is on free enough. All right, gotta make sure this thing isn't frozen. So I don't know, socket big enough. I'm just gonna have to use this adjustable. Oh. Yeah, I should turn it. No, that's the direction of rotation this thing now, but just wind it over a bit, see what happens. This way. <clears throat> yeah. The alternator ain't too clever. Gonna have to have a look at that. See can we free it off a bit. Right, um chance to give you a shot of WD. Okay. Got the alternator freed off. Uh rotated the engine and I'm happy enough anyway that it's not stuck. So what I'll do next is pour some water into it. I'm just gonna use neat water because I don't know how it's what other plugs are open that just pour some in and see what happens. And I need to attempt to open the fuel cap in a while, but I'm not very impressed by what's in the fuel sediment bowl on top of the pump. So I think I'm going to drain that off and I might run some new fuel through the filters as well, just to be on the safe side. And um, I have brought an extra battery lead and isolator switch, so we'll remove the battery and connect that in. This is why you always pull the urn and take and check it. Look at that. The uh, pre-cleaner had rusted away, filled the oil battery filter with water. You see it there dripping down into the old battery. So we're gonna have to clean that up before we put a new battery in there. And um, we'll just disconnect that inlet pipe, leave it hang free. Over this side, the owner has been up and he pointed out that yeah, this is the dipstick. So I just need to clean it up a bit and get it to sit in properly, but there seems to be enough oil in this thing anyway for the moment. Yeah, I'll build it for in a second. I'll check that. Um, grab pipe grips, I think we'll try and get this cap off and we'll have a look at the fuel situation. Pretty good, and uh, this cap was sealing well, so there's a good chance. But the fuel system is good, so I'm just going to grab um, something to put under here, and we'll take off this sight glass in here, this um, sediment ball, and see where we get out of it. Yeah, it smells kind of cruddy, so just put the camera back here a minute. There was a lot of crap in there, so no harm to um, give it a bit of a clean. No, nope. I'm just going to put the ball back on there for the moment, just to stem the flow of fuel, and um, just going to get some rags. I'll give it a little bit of a clean. Right, the water has started to find its way down through the block now, so I'm just gonna clean that plug. Ah, I should clean up the treads before I put water in this thing. Sediment bowl now is cleaned on the other side. So, um, obviously, the zero trapped in there once I pump 
fuel thrown out the other side, it'll fill that ball against the top. But I'll just try and crowd out of it and give it a quick clean. Looks a bit healthier. Alright, so this is the primary fuel filter. I've taken a lot of the crud that was on it off. Unfortunately, I don't have a set of clean filters at me, but um, look, I'll clean it up as best I can. Um, the secondary filter wasn't as bad, so at least it'll protect the pump. But um, try this back on for now and tighten it up. I'm going to try and get some clean fuel through. Right, I'm going to use the hand primer. I've cracked this bleed screw and I've cracked the line onto the pump so you can get some diesel on these filters. Oh, the pump is working nicely anyway. fuel. Yeah, we got diesel. Right. Ah, what size is that? All right, I think that's not for day one. Uh, got some fuel drying out of that filter or air bath as I showed you. Um, I started getting fuel through here but then can hear gurgling inside in the tank, so I actually need to bring a couple of gallons of clean diesel with me in the morning. Um, I've got the battery removed and I've disconnected the pipe to the manifold, but there's a lot of oil in that pipe. So I might take off the opposite end of it as well and just make sure that uh, it hadn't, well I suppose it probably just overflowed up the start of it when that filled with water. But, um, you know, with a diesel engine, you just don't want large quantities of oil where it can get ingested because the engine to run away. Uh, yeah, so that's it. I'll, um, it's a bank holiday here in Ireland, so I'm going to go and have a drink and come back to this fresh tomorrow, hopefully. Okay, so it's day two. Uh, I decided that it's really better to replace both fuel filters just to be on the safe side and I brought some fresh diesel so um just don't want to risk doing any damage to the pump on this thing so we get these installed and we get it bled up as far as the pump and um next step then is to throw a battery in and see can we get it to turn over Grimy considering I uh, should clean some of the crap out of this already yesterday. So put that down there. And the next one. Ah, that is nasty. I'm actually going to take the housing um, and take both housings back to the workshop and clean them out. The rest there. Uh, no point in fitting new filters to these until they're clean. Okay, so I've got both housings cleaned up. Just used um, compressed air to get the worst of it out of there and give them a shadow brake clean. Cleaned them up so we fit the new war rings and we clean the other half of the housing on the tractor and we get the filters in there and filled.
camera. Okay, so we've got oil, fuel, it rotates. I've removed um, the battery leads out of here because the positive lead was damaged and negative wasn't worth the fuck. So I've just kind of brought the positive lead straight down onto the battery in the ground and I've got a negative lead I had at home with a nice leather switch in it and just put it on there. So um, yeah, it's time to bite the bullet and see does this thing crank over. Start your motor break for two seconds. We we'll go at it again. It lives! <laughs> oh man! That was superb. Okay, I'm gonna get you a different angle and fire it up again.
There she is. It's a runner. Okay, so it runs. Um, I went to try to warm it up, it's not, but I'm going to have to go and get more water to the cooling system first. And uh, we can fire her up then. Uh, the owner tells me that the brakes are locked in it and that it won't move. Uh, we'll see, can we get it into gear? We can't really move on it at the moment with the battery position on the ground, but um, we'll just see if, if it wants to break free. But let's top up the water on it first. Okay, got a bit more coolant in it. So we'll just fire it up again. Uh, not gonna give it much throttle this time and we'll see how it behaves. Um, it did not want to start with the excess fuel button or the excess fuel on. It's not a button in this, actually. The owner pointed this out to me. Uh, you rotate this up to give it excess fuel. So different to how long you used on the Ford, so you just press a button. So fuel on, give it a tiny little bit of throttle. Let's see, does it start? Hopefully, it's on the button. <laughs> no, it's gonna need a little bit of throttle. Yeah, give it about halfway is there. That'll do it. on the camera.
Sorry, I had to get out of that wind. Um, apologies for all the wind noise in this video. Uh, the well, that's her running anyway. Um, try move it as you can see earlier, but she is stuck. But uh, it's something I'll probably come back and free off the throttles. If I have those free, I'll have a look at the braking system as well. See, can I free it off? If it's easy to free, I'll free it off. I'm gonna try and drive it out of there. I just need to tidy up a couple of bits as well. I must um, repair the battery lead and put it back in the correct position and put a I'll put a permanent um, battery lead battery negative lead on it out front so that he can fire it up uh, once we get the brakes read out not, not to be able to move around and um, yeah you would know we might be able to get this thing working at some stage there's a New Holland baler here as well uh, that I think would be pretty class if we could hook it up to it and actually make a couple of bales this coming summer so let me know what you think. Um, thanks again for watching the video. Make sure you hit the like button. If you're new around here, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to turn on your notifications. Click that little bell icon and uh, see you on the next one. Take care.